Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. Today I want to talk about the exposure triangle, which is the three functions on your camera that uh, permit you to get a good exposure in your photographs. So no matter how much light there is in the scene, you can get a good exposure by making the necessary adjustments. So this diagram shows the three functions. They are the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. Between the three of them, you get, you make the adjustments to make, no matter what the lighting situation, in order to get the proper exposure. So the ISO is how sensitive the sensor is to light. So the lower the ISO number, the uh, less sensitive it is, which means the more light is required to make a good exposure. And uh, as you increase the ISO, you also increase digital noise, which is like static or like film grain. And it is usually not a desirable attribute. So you want to uh, keep the ISO as low as you can pretty much all the time, um, except that sometimes you can't. So the next uh, control is the shutter speed. The shutter speed is how long the shutter is open, the shutter is closed, and then when you press the shutter button, it opens the shutter, which allows light to come into the sensor. And how long that shutter is open is set in your shutter speed uh, function. And the third one is the aperture. The aperture is how big the opening is, from a very small opening to a very large opening. And obviously, the smaller the opening, the less light is coming in at a time. So between the shutter speed and the aperture, you adjust how much light comes in at a time and how long that light goes in. So you can balance those two out. You can increase one and decrease the other. And I'll be showing you that on my diagram in just a moment. So the advantage of a fast shutter speed is that you freeze motion and uh, that both that includes camera shake and it includes subject motion the advantage of a small aperture is that it increases your depth of field depth of field is the distance in front of and behind your subject that is also in focus so if you want a lot of depth of field, which is often the case in a landscape photograph, then you want to have a small aperture, which is represented with a large F number. And so these circles represent different amounts of light. So the large circle represents how much light you would have on a bright sunny day. And uh, the second one is about what the light would be on an overcast day, and then a little darker day. And the third one in is in a, say an interior situation uh, that's not terribly brightly lit. So we're gonna look at a, a few of these and I'll take these out of the way. And we'll start with the largest one. This is a bright sunny day. And we're gonna start with an aperture with an ISO of 100. So I'll put a pin in there and that makes that pins down one of one leg of my tripod here. So the other ones, as I said, you can adjust one and uh, and adjust the other to balance it out. So you can move this to one end or the other end. So you have to decide uh, what's important to you. In our situation, let's say that we have decided that we are shooting a landscape and we really want to have a lot of depth of field. So I'm gonna put a pin in here at F22 and put the loop around there. And what that tells us is that I have to limit my my shutter speed to a 60th of a second. And uh, that's not a very fast shutter speed. So if I'm hand holding the camera and if I have a long lens on, I may need a faster shutter speed than that. Or if there are things moving in my subject, then I might need a faster shutter speed than that. So, um, if I need a faster shutter speed, now if I just moved my shutter speed up to 125th of a second without changing anything else, then I would end up underexposing the picture. It would be too dark. If I put the shutter speed down at a 30th of a second and didn't change anything else, I would be overexposing the picture. It would be too light. So uh, I'm going to, I've decided that I really need to have at least a 125th of a second. So then the decision I have to make is, do I want to sacrifice some aperture or sacrifice some ISO? So let's say I've decided I can really, I can really handle going to a six, F16. So that means now I can move this up to 125th of a second and get a good exposure. So uh, when you're adjusting this in your camera, 
The camera has several different controls. Uh, it has the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO all available. And when you look through the viewfinder, uh, the camera also has a built-in light meter. And when you look through the viewfinder, you'll see, for example, on a Canon camera, there's a scale in the middle, the bottom of the viewfinder, that shows a um, negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, plus two. And as you adjust the shutter speed or the aperture, you will see a needle move. Your goal is to put that needle right in the middle. Uh, as you get more experienced in photography, you'll discover there are some situations where you do not want the needle in the middle, but until you understand uh, what those situations are, you always want to put the needle in the middle. So putting the needle in the middle is making this string be taut on all sides. And so uh, if I uh, decided that I wanted to change this to a 250th of a second, and I really want to keep um, an aperture of f16, then I might, I, I've decided I really need to sacrifice a little bit of ISO film speed or, or um, speed there in order to allow me to do that. And uh, the ISO is not as convenient to adjust in, mo in most cameras these days, uh, unfortunately. But um, nevertheless, there is an adjustment for the ISO. So if you see that you can't get a desirable aperture and shutter speed at ISO 100, then you need to increase your ISO. But that's really the only reason you would want to increase the ISO is not being able to get um, adequate shutter speed and aperture. So let's look at a different amount of light. Let's take a look, let's skip one and go down to a sort of a, sort of a dark day. So let's see if we can do F16. We can't even do F16 and the 200, ISO 200. So let's go to say F8 at ISO 200, and on this particular amount of light, the best we can do is a 30th of a second. So uh, that's telling us uh, if we can afford to do a 30th of a second, and it'll take some experience on your part to discover how slow a shutter speed you can handhold your camera, or if you have a tripod, then you don't have to worry about that unless your, your subject is moving. But uh, let's say that we've decided we really need a 60th of a second and we really need F8. In that case, we need to move up to ISO 400. So we go to ISO 400, and we can go up to a 60th of a second. So again, you balance these three factors uh, according to what you need. And uh, it will also take exper experience to discover um, what kind of depth of field you get at different apertures. There are also some, some very nice apps for iPhones and Android devices that will show you where you dial in a particular aperture and a particular subject distance, and it'll show you what, uh, what depth of field you'll get at that aperture. So. Uh, now, if we take a look at this really low light situation, uh, we're probably going to have to go to f5.6. And, and you can see this is falling between a few uh, settings right here. We're between a 15th and a 30th of a second, maybe a 25th of a second, maybe a 20th of a second, whatever the camera happens to have in that range. Um, and it uh, looks like we definitely cannot go any lower than ISO 400 in this amount of light. So we may decide we really want to go up, let's say all the way up to ISO 1600, so that we can kick our shutter speed all the way up to maybe a, an 80th of a second or so. So there you go. Those are the three legs of the exposure triangle. And uh, you adjust them by setting the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO on your camera. Uh, you can do those individually in the manual exposure mode. If you use uh, the sh shutter priority or aperture priority, you set one, the camera sets the others. So uh, I hope that has been helpful. Thank you.